coffee, waffles, and roaches. That's what's on the menu for dirty dining tonight. From a cockroachy coffee bar to sewage at a seafood supermarket, 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears shows you who's not feeling so festive this week. A sign greeting customers at Tiabi Coffee and Waffle Bar acknowledges life happens and coffee helps. Apparently not with roaches, though. I'm Darcy Spears from Channel 13. We're here because you guys are on dirty dining this week for the closure that you had from the health district for the cockroach infestation. Inspectors went to the restaurant on Maryland Parkway in Flamingo on December 4th to follow up on a customer complaint about cockroaches. We don't ignore the fact about what happened because we're not going to lie about what happened. But I will tell you, it was like this whole building issue. The inspector counted more than 45 multi-generational German roaches throughout the facility and roach feces on outlets and beneath shelving. There were traps around, so obviously you guys knew you had roaches. Um, the uh, and they even said there was one in the cold brew coffee filter, so that's kind of oh, really? yeah. Oh, I, I don't know why there was. I, I don't know. I can't tell you. Tiabi had records of monthly pest control, but they were lacking specific information. You know, they took some accountability for the fact that they were a pest control company and they neglected a lot of areas. Manager Tiffany Stiles says the old building has had ongoing issues. Yeah, it's very hard because, um, you know, there's already restrictions, so then we have to shut down. Um, it was really an issue of, of the back part of the building because there was some maintenance that was going on with the entire building so and it caused us to have um, issues in the back of the store and we tried to maintain it but obviously it, it got out of control. Before reopening with an eight demerit A grade on December 10th, Tiabi had to deep clean and get rid of grease, old food and buildup on floors and shelves. Inspectors also found sausage and chicken that had to be thrown out due to unsafe temperatures and noted a lot of standing water at the back receiving door due to a broken drain line Line, and a very large amount of spider activity and nests in a back hallway. Stiles blamed the property manager for that. So it was a property man management issue. So we had to take it up with property management. We got that under control and then we got us under control. The plan moving forward? Definitely being more vigilant to the issues at hand and not, um, you know, letting things get swept under the rug. Repeat offender Las Vegas Superstore is back on dirty dining for the second time in just over two months. This time, the seafood department at the market on Spring Mountain in Decatur was shut down for sewage on December 2nd. Inspectors saw food handlers rinsing and cutting fish for customer service while wastewater was actively overflowing onto the prep area floor. The manager said it had been that way for weeks and he didn't know it was an imminent health hazard that required them to close. Inspectors discovered foul smelling floor sinks and drains throughout the front prep area that were clogged with excessive wet food debris and thick black liquid. Floors near the deep fryers, prep area, live seafood tanks and display coolers were dirty with old soggy food, grease and trash. There was excessive mold in the ice machine used to store raw fish and excessive black grease on ventilation hoods and fryer filters. The the manager said they took care of everything when the inspector came and the seafood department did reopen with a zero demerit A grade on December 3rd. But it's worth noting what drew inspectors to the market in the first place. A customer complained to the health district after buying a package of longan, a tropical fruit similar to lychee. A sticker on the front of the package says it's from Thailand, but the label on the back, which is partially obscured with a black marker, shows the product is actually from China. The customer wrote, they know a lot of people are boycotting food made in China because all their products are so cancerous. That's why they try to change the label illegally. The inspector did not find the product on shelves, but there was a box of it in the market's office. The manager said it had come from a distributor with portions of the label redacted. And once the manager was informed by the consumer, all packages were removed from sale to return to the vendor.
There was one other closure on December 2nd at Rum Runner on Desert Inn and McLeod. Inspectors found the restaurant had leased out its kitchen during COVID to The Pit, which was operating without a valid permit from the health district. The person in charge said no food handlers had worked in the kitchen for three weeks, but inspectors still found plenty of violations. Employee food was intermingled with food for sale. Dirty kitchenwares were caked with old food but stored as clean and there was evidence of smoking in the food prep area. The kitchen at Rum Runner is still closed. The owner of the pit did not return our call for comment. Darcy Spears, 13, investigates.